Hi, you guys. I'm going to be doing an eclipse based class today. Um, an eclipse season comes around about every six months. And even though this is talking about the one ending in 2020, the eclipse energy is usually very similar in the fact that eclipses help to shine light on things that have been hidden or obscured in the shadows or in the unconscious or just in general, maybe some information or knowledge that is not known yet. And so look out because this particular eclipse is going to be revealing more and more truths about our society and about you know things that have been hidden from us. In fact, some things are already coming out if you've been paying attention to the news. But personally speaking, I want you to consider, you know, if, if you're seeing this right when it comes out, you may be able to reflect on just this week leading up to this particular eclipse, December 14th, 2020. Um, you may have had some funky energy this weekend. I know in my household there were some um, things that were stirring beneath the surface that um, kind of came out, and we were able to resolve it very quickly and very easily. Um, but luckily, we're all pretty conscious beings and we can communicate really well. And I have lived in households where the communication is not stellar or where things are projected onto other people. And I know that can be kind of an unhealthy situation, but even if that's happening for you and you're watching this and you're listening to this, then you are the light worker, you are the light being, and you can shed light in these situations, hopefully, um, just through being you and knowing some of this information. So with the eclipse, shining light on things like that, I want you to consider What's been going on in your own head? Like certain thoughts that feed emotion and the emotions that get revved up and amplified with that. Um, I know for myself, the last eclipse we had in November, I had some insecurities coming up. And I rec thank God, I recognized it as soon as my emotions started getting invested in it. And then I was able to stand back and take a few breaths and recognize that that was the old story, that is the old script, and I was able to shift my energy. It's taken me years of practice to do that, but I'm here to tell you, if you put in the time, if you put in the effort, it is so worth it. So even if it's not eclipse time, you know, this can still um, occur. So think about what has been showing up mentally. What has been showing up that's gotten you revved up? And be in that state or question of, is this even true? You know, 2020 has been a year of all years. And I know for myself, I feel like I'm just kind of staying in the question of everything. And I'm trying to stay neutral about everything. I'm trying to keep my vib vibration high. So I'm not giving into this narrative or that narrative. And I'm not, um, getting involved in all the polarity that's happening and it's brought me so much more peace because i was there earlier this year and by the close of this year i'm like mm, i'm out all good because really in the big scheme of things what really affects us right now um that's what we need to focus on so what's happening in your head what's happening in your heart what's showing up in life what are the things that are coming to your awareness and it's making me question some things because this is the time to do that because some of these things like i said last month some insecurities came up for me that's really my old self it's not really my new self but that's what can happen these remnants of things that we maybe thought we had completely healed or overcome may be cropping back up and that's okay it's just showing you there's still just a little bit more work to be done and you know, just do the inner work. Um, it's part of our human experience. So think about other things that may be showing up that you need to restructure. For instance, I've made some choices and decisions this year that you know I felt really good about, but now I'm sitting with it going, there's just not synergy. I'm not feeling aligned with it. I'm not feeling supported by it. 
And so I've been sitting with it, trying to figure out what to do. And I think I have some clarity on what to do. In fact, I even pulled some cards the other night, uh, knowing that it was close to the eclipse. And I would show you, but I actually moved them. They're in another room now. And I asked the question, shuffled the cards, and a card came out. And it said, make a commitment. And I knew what it meant. And I went back to the little book, and I read a little bit more. And it was saying, whatever you've been thinking or desiring or dreaming up, make a commitment and just do it. Oh. I'm like, well, I need a little bit more clarity than that. So I started shuffling the cards. I'm like, give me another clear answer. And the card came out and it said, it actually said, if the situation is not serving you, leave in bold letters. <sighs> the message was loud and clear. I'm still sitting with it, but I know what I need to do. So this is not an exception for me. This is going to happen for you as well. I just heard, and I left my notes at the studio because I just taught this class today. Um, but I wanted to say something else about this particular eclipse with it being new beginnings and making bold choices, taking a risk, um, stepping outside of your comfort zone, checking in to see where you're aligning and where you're not, and then making the tweaks, making the shifts so that you do start to feel more aligned with where you're meant to be and what you're meant to do. Um, but there, oh, there's a certain term for it. I've never heard of this. Something kind of symbol. Oh. Anyway, I was just reading an article last night and it said, I believe it was a psychic who had put certain symbols with the eclipses. And the symbol for this particular eclipse is the bluebird. And I loved, loved, loved hearing that. It said, pay attention to see if there's a bluebird at your door. Now, I mean, who knows? You could literally have a bluebird. I'm not expecting to literally see a bluebird, but a bluebird represents happiness. A bluebird represents joy. So we're supposed to be on the lookout for where this may be showing up. And think about a door. A door is like a portal. And the eclipse is like this portal of energy that's going to create this magnitude of shifts. That's going to illuminate things that we need to shed light on that need to come forth. So look for the bluebird of happiness. It could show up anywhere. It could show up as anyone. So just see if you're open to receive the message. Also remember what we're thinking about right now. And it's not just this day because the eclipse energy actually carries us through months. Okay. It's saying really pay attention because the portal is so magnified right now about what we're thinking because what we're thinking is really important in how we manifest things and how we create change within but also change without. I just did a whole series on um, a scientist and a doctor who's talking about the brain and how meditation is showing what a difference it makes for a person's mind and how they think. And we can actually shift our thoughts and shift our thinking to be true co-creators in our life. Whole nother subject matter, but let's get started. Let me shift this camera view. All right. So let's just start on the floor on our backs and you can just take a corpse position. And feel free to have your hands resting on your belly. Start to breathe in and out through the nose. but improving the quality of your breath. Slowing it down. Increasing your intake of oxygen. And feeling the belly fluctuate up and down as you breathe. 
Settle into your body. Let your breath start to calm the mind. On your next inhalation, pull the feet together so the ankles are pretty close and extend the arms overhead like a morning stretch. As you exhale, gently hug the left knee into the belly. We're just going to do a little Vinny yoga therapy to start with. Inhale, stretch the limbs. Exhale, alternate sides, hugging the right knee in. Continue, inhale, open up the front of the body, and exhale, stretching the hip and low back. Inhale, pointing through the toes, and then exhale, you can soften the feet as you draw the knee in. Let's do one more to each side. And see if you can synchronize your movement to match your breath. On your next inhale, take the arms overhead. And as you exhale, bend the knees, flatten the feet to the floor. On your next inhalation, plug the feet down, lifting thighs, hips, abdomen, and puffing the chest towards the chin. And as you exhale, you're going to bring your arms with you as you slowly lower one vertebra at a time. Inhale, pressing down through the soles of the feet, especially through the mound of the big toes. Circling the arms overhead, allowing the back of the hands to rest as soon as the hips get to their highest degree. And as you exhale, synchronize that movement so that the palms and the sacrum descend simultaneously. Continue inhaling on the right and exhaling on the descent. Concentrate this effort. Feel free to activate Ujjaya Pranayama. One more. Once you descend down, go ahead and come a hold of both knees. Inhale, open up the arm, shoulder height. And as you exhale, roll the knees to your left, keeping the feet stacked. Inhale, grip in the belly, draw the knees to center, and exhale, roll them over to the right. Continue inhaling to center. Exhale, cross over to the left. Inhale. And exhale to the right. This time on the inhale, when you draw to center, you're going to pour down to the left side again. Maybe take in the right hand, or left hand rather, to hold down the knees. Maybe even turning your head 
towards the right arm. Come back to your breath. Feel it ripple up and down the right side body. Close your eyes and affirm mentally within. I am opening myself up to the new abundant flow of energy coming in with this eclipse. Inhale, head to center, knees to center, and then exhale, send them across to the right. Gently turning the head to the left. Maybe using the right hand to bury the knees closer to the floor. Try to breathe up through the left side of the body. I call it the lunar panel, and the right side being the solar panel. Because we're doing an eclipse practice, we're going to be mixing uh, the moon sow in with the sun sow, or at least mixing the elements together. Now affirm within to plant this positive seed. I am opening myself up to the flow of abundant energy from this eclipse. Inhale, turn the head to center, roll completely to your right side, lower that left hand down, and we're not only going to come up, but we're actually going to come all the way up to stand. So when you come up to stand, have your feet towards the top of the mat. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra and bury the feet downward so that you ignite the work through the legs and glutes. Set your personal intention for this practice. And then inhale, lace your hands, reach the arms up overhead. As you pump the palms skyward, exhale, curve to your left, creating Chandrasana Crescent Moon. So if we're being asked to make a bold and courageous choice, something that the heart is prompting us to do, but maybe logic or fear is holding us back, know that you're being supported. And affirm here, strength and courage fill up my body cells. Inhale, come back to the top. Exhale, you're gonna curve over to the right. Sink a little deeper into your left foot. Pump the left wrist a little higher. And then affirming as you breathe, strength and courage fill up my body cells. Make this a meaningful, mindful, meditative flow. Inhale, rise to the top. Exhale, swan dive forward and down to Uttanasana. And when you come down to Uttanasana, you can approach this yin or yang. I'm gonna be active. So to be active, I'm really drilling the feet down, feeling the calves firm up, feeling the kneecaps lift up. Make sure you're hinging from your hips instead of your waist. Release down. And remember this energy is also revealing to us what we need to release what wounds from our past that still need a little healing. Think about if we were able to let that go, how it would catapult us into the person we want to become. Think about perhaps what you're not aligning with and what you may need to restructure. Or if you have the ideas brewing, but you haven't quite taken action. The legs, this first chakra, help to motivate us to move forward in life. So think about shedding any layers or shedding anything that blocks you. 
affirming as you hold, nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. Inhale, slide your hands up your shins. Stretch out through the vertebrae. Look out with your eyes as if you were imagining the future you want to create for yourself. The future actually lies in what we're doing in the present moment. So exhale, bow back over and down. Inhale, step back, plank. Exhale, shift forward, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale in the knees, lift to up dog. Exhale, curl your toes and roll back to down dog. Pause here. Solidify your hands. Stretch up and out through your arms. Sail your seat higher. Drive your thighs back. Think about how much change has already happened just in this one year alone. So embrace change and be flexible. Inhale, step your right foot forward. And when you step the right foot forward, we're going to lower the back heel. Float the hands as you straighten the front leg, but keep looking down. Take your right hand to rest lightly on your leg bone. Stack that right arm, shoulder, right rib cage over the front thigh. And slowly sail the left arm up in the air. Stretch out through the spine. Press down through the feet. And create space here in your abdomen for your diaphragm. So you have easy access to breath. Consider this top arm being like a sail. You're lifting your sail with the winds of change. Affirming energy and joy flow down to me. The energy, the shift that's coming, and the joy from the bluebird of happiness. As you exhale, gaze down towards the right foot. Soften that front knee. Bring your hands down to the floor, or if you prefer blocks, bring them in. And then press down through the ball of the right foot as if you're accelerating in your car. And notice the muscles around the shin far up. Drop your head quickly and look towards your back foot. The toes are facing you to the front of the mat. Your left hip slightly spirals around in front. And you're welcome to keep the arms and the spine long here. Or you can drape over a moment if that's a possibility for you. On your next inhale, we are going to straighten the arms. And again, you can choose whether or not you want to block or not. But we're going to open up to this variation of Parita Trikonasana, revolving triangle pose. Now, even though the left hand is resting on the block of the floor. The primary foundation is the feet. Remember with certain poses, we're sending the energy in a certain direction. Here, it's the top hand. So ascend the energy up. Exhale, lower the right hand down. Lunge that front knee. Feel free to lose the blocks. From that low lunge, you're going to walk your hands to the left side of your mat, turning the right toes to face the corner and planting your left foot. Now, of course, if you have less flexibility here, the blocks can be utilized. Otherwise, you can use your hands. Now, instead of being over here with the knee, you actually want to create some space. I don't know if you can see that with my arm up between your waist and your inner thigh. Skandasana. And be that crouching tiger. Turn your left toes towards the corner of the mat. Take the lunge here. And then, of course, you can personalize this. 
So say for instance, that's too much to hold. You can inhale to one direction and then you can exhale to the other. Personally, I like to hold it for an extra breath or two. I'll let you determine what is best today. Of course, there's other variations you can do with your arms, but the older I get, the deeper I go. Deeper by meaning deeper in meditation. I don't feel like I have to do all the fancy stuff physically. It's a bonus. <laughs> now gently turn the feet to face the front. Frame the right foot with your hands. We're gonna inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to down dog. Hold and breathe. On your next inhale, you can step, lunge, or float through to the top of the mat. Exhale, release. Uttanasana. Then inhale, coming all the way up. This time the hands will lace above you. Pump the palms upward. Hug the arms close into the sides of the face. Keep drilling down through your legs and feet. Exhale, curve to the right. Strength and courage fills up my body cells. Inhale, right. Exhale, curve left. Breathe. Inhale to the top, exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Think about all the uncertainty we have faced already. Think about how life really has a lot of uncertainty. So be bold, be brave, and be ready to step forward. Stepping forward through the door of uncertainty, letting go of expectations, affirming nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. Inhale, drop your hands to your legs, lengthen through the spine, look forward and out. Exhale, close back into self. Inhale, feet walk back, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Hold and breathe. So the sun salutations usually bring in warmth and fire. And the moon salutations are more of the deep, stretchy, cooling poses. Inhale, left foot steps through. Exhale, back heel props down. Float your hands, left hand to the shin, stacking the arm, the shoulder, the ribs over that front thigh. And then inhale, fanning the right arm skyward to triangle pose. Find the best uh, location for your back foot that gives you a feeling of steadiness. The combination of steadiness and ease is what an asana should be. Think about being a magnet or an antenna with this top arm, drawing positive, supportive, Abundant energy your way, affirming energy and joy flow down to me. Exhale, cast your gaze down, slightly bend the front knee, bring the hands down, 
turn away from your back heel and slowly straighten out the legs. Again, it's okay to bring the blocks in. Lower the head, make sure the right toes are facing you. The hips feel fairly square. Usually what happens, there's usually some asymmetry tilt in the pelvis, but we want there to be more symmetry. I don't know if you can see that. You're just taking the left hip back and in as the right hip rolls a little bit more forward. Now choosing here to press down through the ball of the left foot, and I know we're not as used to that, so we usually drive with the right foot. So press down through the left, and you can always drape over if you feel compelled. Inhale, re-straighten the arms and back, preparing for the revolving twist. Left arm reaches up to the heavens. So remember next week with the winter solstice on the 21st, we have the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn creating the Christmas star. It should be visible, I believe, in the southwest skies all week of Christmas. And again, it's ushering in a new era, the Aquarius age. And the shift is moving us towards unity consciousness, sometimes referred to as Christ or Krishna consciousness. Now lower the left hand, lunge that knee. When you lunge the knee, make sure you don't surpass the ankle like this. You want to keep it more perpendicular to the floor. All right, we're going to turn down on the right foot, spin the left foot towards the corner of the mat, taking skandhasana, and of course, you can choose whether or not you want to flow back and forth, or if you want to pause and hold for a breath or more. Then the next time you come back towards the left foot, you can spin around. Once you spin around, we're going to take another vinyasa, step into plank, lower to chaturanga, inhale to up dog, and exhale to downward facing dog. On your next inhale, bring the feet to the top of the mat, lengthen out through the spine, and exhale, fold back in. Inhale all the way up, hands laced together, flip the palms open, curve to your left. So if you're staying in the question of something you felt prompted to do, just ask, just pray, just meditate, just ask your spirit guides. See if you can receive a sign. Inhale up to the top. Exhale, pour to the right. Embrace quiet moments. Invite more silence into your life. Try to turn off Netflix so you're not constantly entertained, and maybe you'll receive the clarity you need. Inhale to the top. Exhale, fall down. All right, from here, we're going to inhale, set the left foot back. We're gonna plant the left hand down and move into reverse side angle, or at least a variation of it. And as you're here in the twist, I'm adding in twist today because the front side of the body represents the light or the conscious self, and the back of the body represents the unconscious or the shadow self, right? Similar to the eclipse, illuminating and shining light on what's been hidden, unknown, ignored, denied. Exhale, bring the right hand down, and we're going to lift that right foot, place the shin down, stretch the left leg back, 
and we're going to walk it out to pigeon. However, I'd like you to rest on Sphinx arms first. And I want you to be very cautious with this. And don't do it if you have like a bum knee or something. In fact, if you need to modify, you can flip on your back, cross the right ankle over the left knee for eye of the needle or the figure four. Now here you can rock gently. Again, if you don't feel a catch in the hip or knee, you're not being extreme. You're just leaning a few inches one way and then the other. And then release lower if possible. Three more breaths. Next inhale, begin to exit, lifting your way up to the sphinx arms. And then walking the hands back. Curling the back toes under. If you want a vinyasa, you can take it, but I'm just going into downward facing dog. Feel free to add in that extra element if you prefer. And then we'll inhale, step the left foot forward in between the hands. And if that's too much for you, you can always dip to the knees and then swing the left foot around and then come to low lunge this way. Plant your right palm, open up into that reverse twist. If that hip wants to wing out, just kind of tuck it in. What is being illuminated for you? Exhale, bring the hand down. Press into the back foot in your hand so that you can elevate the left foot, cross it over, and walk it down to sphinx arms. A gentle sway. When we used to be in the original Half Moon studio, I had probably two or three different uh, Japanese teachers who were here for just a couple years at a time, and they would teach vinyasa in Japanese. It was really cool. But one of them also had a massage technique. You can go ahead and lower. And I didn't know she knew a massage technique, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but she asked if she could give me a treatment before she moved back to Japan. I said, of course. And on the massage table, basically all she did was shimmy and shake my entire body. And I swear to you, that's one of the best massages I've ever had. It wasn't anything I expected it to be. But there is something about that rocking and shaking that is really good for dispelling stress and tension and past memory and things that you're just holding on to. So if you guys happen to know what that massage is called, please note it or send me a message.
Inhale, slowly. Return to Sphinx arms. When you return to Sphinx arms, I want you to grip your hands together, curl your back toes under, and you're gonna bring it back to forearm plank. So your forearms are pressing, your triceps and deltoids are engaged, upper back engaged, core engaged, glutes engaged, quads engaged. Keep breathing, keep the head up. Two more breaths, you got this. Now sink to the front side of the legs, uncurl the toes, and you are pushing. Notice when I'm just relaxed here, how the heels swap out and um, the knees sink to the floor and the hips in the seat is really soft. But if I stretch the leg bones back, get the heels parallel to each other, glue the tops of the feet to the floor, my kneecaps lift, my legs are engaged, my glutes are engaged, and then tuck the tailbone so you're pushing down through the pubic bone area. Notice I just grew a little bit taller here in my spine. That is one of the primary foundations of this pose. At the same time, you're pressing through the forearms, retracting the belly slightly, spreading across the front of the shoulders and collarbones. Excellent, slide your hands back, come to the forehead. Inhale, lift to all fours. Exhale, back to child's pose. We're gonna get a little bit more yin. To cool ourselves down. Get grounded in our bodies. So you may need to lift up just a little bit in order to separate the knees slightly wider, keep the big toes touching. And you're gonna come up with your hands open and then you're gonna slip and slide your arms through, bowing your head, the chin can even rest on the upper arm. You can always bring a block underneath the brow if you need some support for your head. And let your toes soften. Your hips descend, even though they may not touch the feet. Since the right arm is out in front, you may want to stretch out through that arm a tad bit more. You inhale, lift your face. Slide your right arm out and up. Thread the right arm behind your back. And turn to your left cheek and temple. Let your weight plummet down to the earth. Gently remove the back arm, press into the right hand, slowly come up. All right, we're going to flip the palms open. This time the left arm is in front 
And we'll slide it through to bow forward and down. Feel free to stretch a little longer through the left arm this time. Next inhale, you can just flip the face up, slide your left arm out and up, thread and loop it behind your back. Notice when we loop, sometimes we lift the seat a little bit, so just kind of settle back down, flipping to the right temple and cheek. Eyes can be open or closed. Move the back arm, set that left hand in front of the face, and then slowly come up. Draw the knees closer together, slide your arms out, rock up hands and knees, exhale, down dog. On your next inhale, bend the knees, hop the feet forward, taking malasana. And if you have a block, if you sit on the block, you can come a little bit higher like this. Actually, I'm going to do this today. It actually feels nice. It's a little bit more restorative. You can do it the regular way without the block, though. Now press through the feet. Come all the way up into Kali Goddess Pose, where the thighs are really rolling out. Except, I know in the moon side we do Kali Goddess the regular way, but we're gonna add in a little Qigong method. It's a meditation. Have your arms circled kind of in front of you with your fingers fairly limp. This is called Circle of Light. I want you to imagine at the pelvic floor, there's a light that's gonna come up on the in-breath, from your back body, alongside your spine, over the crown of the head. And as you exhale, imagine that light continuing past the third eye, down through the heart, chest, abdomen, returning to the pelvic floor. Inhale, circling the light up the back body. Exhale, visualizing the light pouring down the front body. Three more breaths. And then slowly lower the arms. Turn your feet parallel. Come to bear pose. And instead of like swaying the back, pull the belly in. And notice the hips are a little bit higher here than squat. And I know oftentimes we get into crow from squat, 
But this will give you a little bit of a leading edge. If you bring your hands down, shoulder distance apart, squeeze the elbows down and in. All you have to do is lift your heels and head up. Stack the knees onto the arms. Point the toes and lift. You need to rock the feet back down, go ahead. And you may want to turn your body sideways now, just to be on the sticky mat. Make sure there's a wide stance between the feet and then gently lower down to Prasarita Padottanasana. Again, there's different things you can do with your arms. I'm just gonna be simple today. The crown of the head faces the floor. And then if you're in the practice of working with Shrishasana 2 from this position, and if you're flexible enough to lower the forearms down to the ground, lace your hands together, create some space for the head to go in between the thumbs, and then you'll fly the heels up and reach the legs up towards the ceiling. Pointing the toes. Otherwise, just stay as you are. To come out, you scissor the legs, flex the feet, hinge from the hips, core control to descend the feet. Lifting the head up. Everyone stack onto the hands, lengthen through your whole vertebrae, and then we're going to end the practice with a twist. So as you inhale, reach the right arm skyward. Exhale, take it down, but not landing to the floor. It can kind of swoop underneath your side waist or left arm. Inhale, open up again. Exhale, swoop it down. Inhale, hold the twist. Exhale, release the hand. Left side, inhale, reach it up. Exhale, feel free to thread and loop it under. Inhale, open back to the rotation. Exhale, release. Last one, inhale up, pause, breathe. Exhale, return the hand to the floor. You can cautiously come down to the knees. And let's go ahead and prepare for Shavasana. So extend your legs, unless you want a different position. Slide the shoulders down from the ears, slightly tucking them under. Resting easy. But since there's a lot of healing energy or opportunities with our astrological events this year, I want you to consider either imagining you're being bathed with white light, the white representing purity and purification, If you feel like you need some spiritual healing, bring in the color of gold. If you feel like you need to heal matters of the heart, then imagine either a blush pink, like a rose quartz color, 
or beautiful green. Imagine it filling up and washing out the inside, as well as cocooning and supporting you on the outside. As you're picturing being bathed by the light, try to equally scan through your body and relax each and every bone, muscle, and tendon. Feel like you're on a scavenger hunt, looking for any hidden pockets of tension. Perhaps where you're holding. Let your breath show you the way. played a mantra at the studio with this called Ramadasa Sase Soho. The Ra represents the sun, Ma represents the moon, Da represents the earth, and Sa represents infinity or the infinite one. The mantra translates to me May I merge with the infinite one, the creative source of the sun, the moon, and the earth. It's a healing mantra. Feel free to pause the video if you want to continue Shavasana and just Google Ramadasa and you'll find it easily. You're listening or chanting the mantra. You can visualize the light as we've been doing here now. Absorbing the healing energy for yourself or picturing it as though you're sending it towards someone who needs it right now. On your next inhale, bend the knees. As you exhale, enclose the legs in your arms. Draw them towards yourself. Feel free to rock or sway side to side. Turning over to one. Let's sit for just a moment in silence.
Invite your hands to Anjali Mudra, prayer position at your heart, gently bowing your head. May we all stay open. May we be awake enough to notice what represents the blue bird of happiness. May we recognize any doors of opportunity. May we shine light to heighten our awareness. May we accelerate our consciousness, increase our vibration. May we have the courage to take the path that is less known. May we release what holds us back. May we be inspired to move forward. May we be gifted and receive reward for the work that we have done. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. I hope this eclipse is a wonderful, positive energy for you.